उसके दुश्मन समझ रहे हैं वो अब कभी लौट के ना आएगा एक गुमनामी का समंदर उसमें ही जाके डूब जाएगा क्या अभी बाकी उसकी कहानी है सारी दुनिया को जो सुनानी हो उसे पहचानो देखो वो है कौन क्या वो आएगा पलट के इस इंडस्ट्री का डॉ Is that a big number or not? Answer is obviously yes. Considering the lockdown and impact of Corona, that is surely a big number. With this base information about the company, let's get started. The automobile industry in India is unfortunately fighting a long battle. It all started with the economy slowdown, followed by demonetization, GST. IL and FS crisis, increase in third party insurance, increase in road tax, uncertainties over BS six, and so many more. Just when everyone had thought that the worst was over for the entire automotive industry, COVID nineteen struck. What happened because of that? Many manufacturing plants were shut down. Because of this, there were a lot of companies wherein the supply or the production itself was cut down. Then worst thing came up where the demand was dropped to such an extent that the demand was lowest in the last two decades. This was not a bad thing, but then what happened was the steel prices and other commodity prices which worsened the situation. Itna bhi kam nahi tha, and one more thing happened that was the shortage of semiconductor chips. So I think that the trouble for this industry just not seem to have end. I hope you have understood how much pain the industry faced in the year 2020 but is this also reflected in numbers answer is obviously yes just have a look at these numbers if i'm comparing april to november 2020 with april to november 2019 you can see that the drop in domestic sales is crazy you can see that in some areas like three wheeler segment the drop is as high as 76% now why do you feel that the drop is double digit in almost every single area is there something unusual that's what we talked about right it is entirely the corona impact because of which the drop was very bad well the history of maruti suzuki limited is like very interesting and i'm sure many of you might not be even aware about the history of this company so let me tell this with the help of a story there was a young man living away from his motherland for studies who had immense love for cars he did his internship at rolls royce he came back to his motherland and he expressed his dream of manufacturing a cheap affordable efficient and indigenously built people's car in the country to his mother this was the time when license raj prevailed in the country and getting approvals was a humongous task but his mother approved the idea and got the license for him which gave birth to maruti motors limited way back in 1971 you might be wondering as to who was this powerful lady She was none other than the Prime Minister Mrs Indira Gandhi herself and the young man was none other than Mr Sanjay Gandhi Coming back to Maruti Motors Limited they came up with the prototype of their first car whose feasibility test was done by Vehicle Research and Development Establishment Ahmednagar However the prototype could not pass the test which meant that it was not road worthy 
in spite of all these things in 1974 maruti was granted an industrial license to make 50000 cars but in 1977 the general elections were won by janata dal government and maruti motors limited which was in losses was then liquidated After 1980 when Indira Gandhi ji came back to power her late son's dream was revived with a small upgrade and Maruti Udyog Limited was born a team was formed who visited manufacturers across the globe for a venture in 1982 a license and joint venture agreement was signed between Maruti Udyog Limited and Suzuki of Japan where Suzuki had 26% of the equity what followed was a history that continues to be glorious till this day well i hope you enjoyed this entire journey of maruti suzuki right from 1971 to 1982 but you know what way back in 1982 uh, this like button was not there but in 2021 we do have the like button so pause the video hit the like button and then play the video be honest you didn't know the story right Well to be honest I read through a lot of news articles over the internet and the most referred article to make the story was the business standard news article I have pasted the link of this article in the description box so if you want you can check out that link and read the whole article so coming to the timeline of this entire company in 1981 and 1982 the first two events I've already covered which two events that in 1981 Maruti Udyog Limited was born and in 1982 they collaborated with the Japanese automobile company which was suzuki right starting with 1983 now they launched the ever popular maruti 800 and maruti omni in 1985 bollywood's darling police car which was the maruti suzuki gypsy was launched in 1986 the 100000th vehicle rolled out of the factory in 1987 they commenced exporting with 500 cars to hungary in 1989 they launched india's first sedan class car which was maruti 1000 In 1994 the 1 millionth vehicle was rolled out of the factory and in 1999 again one more amazing car which was Mar- Maruti's Wagoner was launched. In 2001 the launch of another amazing car which was Maruti Suzuki Alto happened. In 2004 Alto became the highest selling car in India which broke the two decade long supremacy of Maruti 800. In 2005 Maruti Suzuki Swift was launched and fast forward now in 2015 Nexa was introduced by the company to launch in the premium cars segment in India I want you all to tell me in the comment section that is there any long form for Nexa if you know that let me know in the comment section and finally in 2016 they launched Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza on well, the business of the company can be divided into two parts one is primary business and one is other activities now what all things are consisted in this primary business it consists of manufacturing purchase and sale of motor vehicles components and spare parts what is included in other activities other activities basically comprises of sale of pre owned cars fleet management car financing and servicing of the cars but when i read their annual report the board of directors have very clearly mentioned that this is not a separate reportable segment and that is why we will not find a bifurcation of revenue profit as far as these two separate segments are concerned so in simple words both these are incorporated as just one for reporting purpose Let's start with the share holding pattern. Here you can very clearly see that the FII holding and DII holding is pretty good. FII holding is almost 23%, DII holding that is nothing but the mutual funds. Their holding is almost 7.5%. How much is the promoter holding? <coughs> Excuse me. Suzuki Motor Corporation is holding the highest share with 56.37%. So in simple words, Suzuki Motor Corporation is the holding company of Maruti Suzuki Limited, right? Uh, Baki LIC holds almost 5.55 percent. Uh, Rachna Ranade holds uh, whatever. Okay, moving ahead. I had promised you that this time I am not going to talk about the balance sheet and P and L analysis in detail. So let's have a quick snapshot of that. The compounded sales growth over 10 years is just at a CAGR of 7 percent. Five years CAGR for sales growth is 4 percent. Three years minus 4 percent. Now you know the reasons why. Please don't ask me why minus four uh, percent CAGR for sale and all that. We have discussed in detail, right? 
But if you check TTM, it's 40% positive sales growth. Now, don't get surprised because we have also talked about this. That now we are comparing it with the corona, right? Lockdown. So, we also know that reason. So, now you should be like, yeah, so I know the reasons of all these figures, right? Now, compounded profit growth. If you see 10 years is almost zero. 5 years minus 14%, 3 years minus 30% and TTM with a positive 27%. Stock price. 10 years, 5 years, fair enough. But 3 years stock price CAGR is minus 11% and 1 year stock price CAGR is minus 7% where there are so many stocks which have doubled and tripled. This stock unfortunately has given a negative return over the last 1 year. Return on equity has also fallen drastically. 10 years return on equity was almost 12%. Then 3 years you can see 8% and last year it was just 4% return on equity, right? Even if you check out ROCE over the period of years, it has dropped from 31% to just 5% in the recent period. Now talking about the quarterly update, you can see a lot of numbers on the screen, but we are not going to talk about old quarters. We are just going to focus on the latest two quarters, which two quarters, March 21 and June 21. If you look at the figures carefully, you can see that sales has reduced roughly by 26%. Operating profit has fell by roughly 59% and net profit has reduced roughly by 62%. Uh, don't get amazed that just by looking at the figures, how can I calculate the percentages? I have these percentages right in front of me, okay? Right. Well, now you might be wondering that again, why such huge numbers? Now, this time it was because of the second Corona wave that this impact was seen. And of course, the drop was also uh, because I mean, there was a slight impact because of the steep petrol price rise. So I hope every time whenever you go to the petrol pump, you'll be like, she petrol price is 107 now, but still you're going to fill up petrol, right? So anyway, this was just a minor impact of the petrol prices. Let's move ahead and do the peer comparison. If you check out carefully, if you compare Maruti Suzuki with its peers, you can see that if I'm comparing two quarters, Q1 of FY22 versus Q4 of FY21. So basically, this is a QOQ comparison. This quarter versus previous quarter. You can see that the market share has dropped for Maruti Suzuki by 0.7%. So that's why you can see a minus 0.7% versus its peers like Hyundai, uh, Tata Motors, M&M, Kia all have gained a market share of 0.9%, 1%, 1.1% 1 and 0.8% respectively. Now, if you check, if you try and analyze what could be the reason for that. So, I found this in one of the ET articles, Economic Time articles, which mentioned about the new SUV trend in India. Okay, it the article mentioned that the share of SUVs in India's passenger vehicles has risen to 35% from 29% in the last year and the high was seen at 48.5% in May. Now, if you check the, the SUV category and if you try and analyze which company has which famous SUV and its market share, then I have a look at this chart which mentions that Hyundai, Hyundai Creta and Hyundai Venue both put together, so Hyundai will have a share of almost 30% in the SUV space. Now compare this with Maruti. Maruti has Maruti Vitara Brezza with barely 13% market share. Compare it with Kia, which is a newly launched company. It has two major models, Kia Seltos and Kia Sonnet, which has a market share put together of almost 21%. In fact, Tata Nexon alone has a market share of almost 10.5%. So I hope you are understanding that why Maruti market share has gone down one of the reasons is the SUV segment right going ahead with future plans so do you think Marty uh, Suzuki will just keep on looking at the reducing market share no so I try to find out their future plans by looking at two things one is the annual report and one is Q1 con call transcripts so in that I found only two major future plans one was the power train strategy I'll just read it out for you wherein the company is working on a strategy to find an appropriate mix of Traditional CNG hybrid for low carbon internal combustion engines. Matla? To reduce emissions. They are working on reducing emissions. Okay. And the second thing that they are trying to work on is uh, work on the alliance of Maruti Suzuki of Suzuki Motors with Toyota so that they can source the relevant technology. So basically, if they get newer and newer technology, they can bring in their own cars. In fact, one of the... Uh, Analysts had also asked a question to the management that are you planning to launch a new model or not on that management said no comments. So let's try and do a technical analysis of Maruti Suzuki. I have taken the latest data that is from 23rd, 21st June roughly till date. What we can see is something known as a descending triangle pattern. Here you can see that the price is continuously falling 
and the price had taken a support at this specific level which is around 6929 you can see around 7000 so you can see from this point we saw a big green candle it went up 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 and from that point it has started falling down 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 and this 7000 mark when this was broken you can see again a steep fall in the price so always remember a descending triangle pattern when the base is broken there's a great chance that the stock price will slide further second technical analysis which i tried to do was before i could identify this uh, descending triangle pattern this was the point which was very important for me and this is a level of 7300 uh which i felt was a very 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 strong support now you might be like aap to koi bhi bolega because now you are going in the past and then you are saying this was a very strong support for me and after that see how much price has fallen now you might be like from where did i did where from where did i get this line okay now you can see this was a support this was a resistance back in that time and you go back and you see this is a, a resistance here it was again somewhere like a support back here again in support here again which was a resistance uh, does this date back to quite a long time just see how how far this goes back this is 2020 was acting as a resistance let us zoom out further and now we are in 2019 again you can see somewhere like a resistance broke it took as a support broke and a sharp fall uske bhi piche kuch hai kya let's see let's see and here you can see that again this price has taken some support at this level so this is what 2018 so the stock was at this similar level of around 7300 way back in 27th september 2018 and today the price is trading below this so i hope now you are understanding how this looks as per the technical analysis parameters and also you have understood how we can check out resistance levels and support levels how we can date it back to a longer time frame as well now if i try to zoom into a specific point here you can see again a head and shoulders pattern being created see this is like not an exact head and shoulder to be very honest but somewhere like a head and shoulder pattern let me just increase this okay so this is like a left shoulder this is like the head and somewhere like a right shoulder so if if i were to draw a trend line which is called as the neck line okay so ideally this portion should have touched here to be a perfect head and shoulder pattern okay so now if you check out the head and shoulder pattern that also has been broken and if you see then the target i'm sure if you have done my technical analysis course you will be able to achieve, uh, you will be able to calculate the target the downside target with the head and shoulder pattern being formed it is coming somewhere around 6176 in technical analysis now we have understood that yes there was a share prices fall but why we have to try and analyze the reasons why were why was there a drop in the share prices the very first reason is chip shortage which chips bole mere lips i love uncle chips the kaso i sense aso anyways i am talking about which chips i am talking about the semiconductor chips okay now you might be like why are these chips or semiconductor chips required in cars now you might have seen that in all modern cars you actually give voice commands to the car the dial this this person and the car dials uh, a phone right now how can the car understand my language for that for the communication to bridge to bridge the gap between the car and me you need a semiconductor chip okay now what car manufacturers typically do is that they place the order for these chips in advance now because of the pandemic many car manufacturers really felt that the demand will drop drastically did the demand drop yes but not as badly as they had expected so in fact what happened was that people who had a little bit of purchasing power they said that let's not go by public transport instead of that we'll buy a car so that will be safe okay now with this there was some sort of demand revival and now the car manufacturers were in a fix there was demand but they had not placed their orders with the chip manufacturers and because of which there was a gap in what the demand for the chips and the supply of the chips because of which there was a chip shortage which led to 
an increase in prices of these chips as well. Second thing was the sharp rise in steel prices. Now, why did this happen? There was a sharp rise in iron ore prices. Now, you'll be like, what is the connection between iron ore and steel? Simple, iron ore is the raw material for steel. So, if there is a raw material, uh, if there is a, a price rise in iron ore, obviously, there's going to be a price rise in steel prices as well. So, because of this, what happened was that <clears throat> the car manufacturers had to increase their car prices okay for a car steel is required right so if steel prices are also rising they have no choice but to increase the car prices in fact maruti increased their car prices in the month of april and also in the month of july but now you can imagine that the festive season is around the corner and now they can't afford to rise increase their prices further in fact they have to give discounts so that the sales will boost now we can imagine if they give a discount, their operating profit margins are going to be impacted. If they increase the price, the sales are going to be imp impacted. So it's as good as yaha pe kua or yaha pe khai. I hope you have understood my emotions. Okay. And the last one is the slow mover disadvantage in the EV space. Now, what am I talking about this? I'm sure everyone knows that by now, Tata Motors, Hyundai, m, &M everyone have come up with their EV cars except Maruti Suzuki. Maruti Suzuki maybe, uh, in fact, when I was reading through again various news articles, the management has very clearly mentioned that they feel that right now India doesn't have the infrastructure also for the EV cars. So they feel that it, it is too early to move into this space. Maybe they are of the opinion that when the game will start, we will have a lot of fun. But will this industry ka dawn come in the right Let me know in the comment section below. Well, I hope you enjoyed the fundamental analysis of Maruti Suzuki Limited, which was not a typical fundamental analysis, but which was packed with a lot of other information about the company. If you have liked this video, don't forget to share it with your friends, relatives, family members, whatever. Till then, uh, do additional research. Take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye.